we'll, we'll turn our turn our attention to Rob and uh, welcome him aboard. Rob Reed, look, it's an amazing uh, way to meet. <laughs> I've got to say that. Although uh, I think I sent you a friend request a little earlier to uh, touch base and uh, and uh, get to know you a little bit. And I'm reading uh, Red's bio here. You've uh, uh, a amazing life. Uh, love your NFL. What team? Well, I'm a, I'm a Rams guy now. Oh, I mean, I, they've been around a bit too, haven't they? Yeah, well, yeah, and then they uh, left. From, it, was, it was like from, a bad from divorce. Southern California out to there and back again and. Wow. Yes. Well, I guess sheep get around. Yeah. They, they actually let, is my sound. Okay. I'm making sure. Cause I didn't get a chance. Is it too it hot? It sounds or? great to me. And red's given us the thumbs up. So yes. Continue. Awesome. Yeah. The Rams um, left, yeah. the Rams left us. So it was like a bad divorce for a while. Yeah. And then they came back and I'm a very forgiving man. Thanks to Jesus. <laughs> and, uh, so I'm back. I love that about you. <laughs> yeah. So they got me back. Um, look, you've had a, 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 a an encounter with Jesus, and uh, your life has been a little bit of a rough ride in certain cases around uh, the Los Angeles injury uh, uh, area. Uh, you're a lawyer as well, or an attorney. Yeah. So, you know, that evidence is still your day job, so to speak. Still, still the regular gig. Although, you know, that allows me to eat. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, God has blessed me in many ways with music as well. And for instance, being asked to play on a night like this. So it's exciting and I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having on a me. Night like this, on a night like this. That's a very good song, too. Oh, I'm yeah. not sure whether you'll play that. <laughs> I'm not playing that, no. Look, it's absolutely wonderful to uh, to have you sharing with us. Can you tell us a little bit about the first song that you're going to share, some of the headspace that you were in when you were writing it and a little bit of the deeper meaning. Sure, we hear I'm it. gonna start us off, it's it's still the 12 days of Christmas. So I'm gonna start off with a song I wrote called Christmas in, is Christ. And uh, for me, when I wrote it, it was thinking about my experience as a very secular Jewish young man, my mom Jewish, my father, agnostic, grew up, uh, grew up Anglican. And I had this memory as I was writing it about our, my Christmas feeling then, because we celebrated Christmas. But Christmas wasn't about Jesus, it was about presents. So we were excited as kids to get up for, uh, to open our presents and all of those great things. Uh, but Jesus was lacking. And my first vision was I see, uh, I first was looking at my son. Uh, as I was just thinking about it and we were just, I think I had the guitar and I was sitting on the couch and I saw him smiling and I was thinking about him and it was, it was, uh, it wasn't even Christmas season at the time, but I thought I'd write a Christmas song. Then I had a vision of my grandma. You'll hear about it, my grandma, which went back to uh, when I was about four or five years old and she visited from England. It was the first time I had ever met her. It was very exciting, but it was Christmas time and I had her, this picture of her rocking on one of our, our reclining chairs. And it was the experience of Christmas there without Christ. And it was this, so this song, Christmas is Christ, is a reminder that the season, and it's so great that the secular world even celebrates this idea of peace and giving, but the season's really about Jesus. And the, season, the, the season's really about uh, the, the greatest event in all of mankind when the word manifest in the flesh came to dwell among us. And so that we can recognize, so that we were able, his parents in particular, to be his hands and feet to teach us how to do it. And um, so that's what the song's about, a reminder of that. Should I, should I go right into it? Yes, please. Let's do it. Then I think about the year, all the toil, sweat, and tears. Our family gathered around the Christmas tree. Christmas wrapping everywhere, Grandma rocking 
upon her chair in the joyful Christmas season. I sometimes forget the reason that in a manger dank and dark. There was a baby born for us To reconcile all wicked men That we might be born again Christmas is more Much bigger than we retail Much bigger than candy canes and Black Fridays. Christmas is Christ. Christmas season Let's be mindful of the reason That in a manger long ago A baby was born to overthrow Our castles and kingdoms built on sand So that we might understand Christmas is more Much bigger than the retail store Much bigger than candy canes And Black Friday Christmas is more Much bigger than a retail store Much bigger than candy canes And Black Friday's Christmas is Christ mm -hmm. Christmas is Christ And indeed, uh, look, it's a great reminder that I love that line. You know, Christmas is more than candy canes and a retail store. That is just so good because that's all we hear on uh, advertisements, on TV and radio. It's all about love and family and, and getting together and arguments and you know all the places that that goes. And yet, there's just this hole that still remains if it's not filled by Jesus. Great song. Yeah, Rock we see. Yeah, thank you. We see how sick the world is, and we just have to look at. Well, it's, you know, COVID helped. Uh, Black Fridays weren't as black. You know, we we thank. We're thankful. Oh, thank you, especially the Christians, right? Oh, thank you, Lord, so much for all of your provision on this beautiful Thanksgiving. Uh, what time is it? Uh, what time is uh, Best Buy open so I can make sure that I can get the uh, lowest price on my TV? So yeah. Um, but this was just a song for me to, uh, to to be a reminder in the Christmas season when I get bogged up in that. So I, I'm I'm a, a notorious victim of those of sales and things. So, but on the same uh, in the same line, this is also this is actually an Advent song. But still, we're in that Christmas season. This next song I'm doing is called Tender Mercy, 
And Tell us a little bit about that one and uh, some of that uh, story behind it and uh, the deeper meaning. This one was written by uh, my from an idea from my pastor. Uh, we're talking about Christmas time, and he's like, "Why? There's all these songs about Mary, Jesus' mom, all, all these great songs, and uh, but no one. What about Zechariah, John the Baptist's dad? The end of John, of Luke one." Uh, in the 60s to the very end to the 70s. I can't remember verse verbatim numbers. But it's gorgeous. The Zechariah song is gorgeous. And in particular, what really f fascinated me, and this was actually the first chorus when I wrote the song, and uh, a, a guy who helped me produce it, he said, you know what, that's actually just a good verse. But it's, it's the rising sun, spelled S-U-N. This is what Zechariah pronounces as he's, He's announced, he's got his voice back, if you imagine that. And he's, he's saying, his name is John. This is what the, the, the God has told me. I have to name this kid. He's going to be John. I got my voice back. And I'm going to, I'm going to prophesy. The rising sun, S-U-N, will come from heaven to shine on those in darkness. And in the shadow of our death, will guide our feet towards peace. And... Uh, his son, Zechariah's son, John the Baptist, was that voice in the wilderness that paved the way for the Messiah, for God manifest in the flesh, to come and live among us, uh, to be born, as we said, imagining as a baby, being hands and feet, but ultimately to, to die for us, to bleed for us, to suffer for us, but most importantly, to rise again for us and forgive us. So this is uh, Zechariah's prophecy, and this one's called Tender Mercy. Praise to the Lord, the God of Israel. He's come to redeem his people. Raise the horn, salvation has come from the house of David. The rising sun will come from heaven to shine on those in darkness and in the shadow of our He'll guide our feet towards peace. He'll guide our feet towards peace. He forgives our sin, the tender mercy, tender mercy of God. He forgives our sin, the tender mercy, tender mercy of God. Whoa, whoa. the tender mercy, the Lord show mercy to our fathers. He remembers. Holy promise he said he'd save us from all evil and take away all our fears, take away all our fears. He forgives our sins. Tender mercy, tender mercy of God, He forgives our sin. The tender mercy, tender mercy of God, He forgives our sin. The tender mercy, tender mercy of God, He forgives our sin. Tender mercy, tender mercy, tender mercy of God. Whoa, whoa, whoa. the tender mercy of God.
love those words. That's Zechariah's. They're not mine. You know, it's just what really, beautiful, really beautiful. Uh, beautiful work that you've done in the spirit in putting those together with that music. That's just beautiful, Rob. Absolutely love that song. And uh, I can see a few heads nodding along the way in the in the uh, top row here. Where we've got other people listening, and uh, it would be so it's so beautiful. And uh, isn't it just amazing that Zechariah? It was a family tradition to uh, call your son after your self, and uh, that was what uh, he planned to do. But That's right. The Lord appeared to him and said, "His name will be John." And he wasn't able to speak until he pronounced that as truth. And, uh, he knew God, and and I I was just talking with somebody about this today. Uh, this is a little aside. I don't want to get to, in too long, but it's it's real interesting to imagine you know, the doubts that they may have thought. I thought about that. You know, he didn't have any doubts in this moment when he wrote this song and from prophecy, he didn't write the song, but he prophesied and it was recorded. But imagine if he's like, oh, my son, he's the one that's going to pave the way. And then 16, 17 years later, his son is like hanging out with a bunch of hippies by the Jordan River and they're, uh, you know, eating locusts and wearing rags and stuff. He's like, hey, when's this supposed to start? Is it was this maybe, a, you know, maybe I had a real weird vision, you know? I thought about that today, you know, because I thought, like, what if it was my son? I'm thinking, what are you doing, John? You know, get going. Pave the way. What do you, what's going on? So, um, yeah, it, interesting, a little aside there that I had today. The, the next song I'm doing is, uh, it's not Christmas, but it's Hebrew. It's a little Hebrew-related thing. So I grew up Jewish. A lot of people know that already. I've been on here. And um, I still consider myself Jewish. I don't consider, I don't label it Messianic, but... You know, if, if I tr this song is about telling my Jewish family and Jewish friends, if you took the time to actually read the Bible and you read the Old Testament and you believe in what you read, it, it paves the way. It is like the John the Baptist in words. It paved the way to see the coming Messiah. We've got the prophet Daniel telling us exactly what's going to happen. And we, we have historical proof that we know that the Jews were looking for Jesus because they were trying to find him in every corner they could find him. You know, Bar Kokhba, the general, and I think about that, but he failed because they had an expectation of, what, of who that uh, Messiah was going to be. And the ultimate conclusion that I, I tell my uh, Jewish friends is that, you know, look, either it's it's true or and if it is true that means or it's not either it's not true or it is true and you we missed him you know like it, daniel points particularly to where the messiah is going to be and you, you just consistently find it in the book of isaiah you find in zechariah everything that jesus did you know coming on a, a lowly donkey through the gates of jerusalem it's all there and uh, it's just a matter of time. And interestingly enough, we don't read things. When I was in Hebrew school, I don't remember ever discussing or touching things like Psalm 22 or Isaiah 53. And that's why I encourage my, uh, my friends and family to do that. So this is Shema Yisrael. Israel, Adonai, hello, hey, Adonai, Echa. I've got a question. Promised Messiah, the Holy One who you must choose to gain eternal life and forgiveness from all of your sin. This King is named Jesus. He once died, but he rose again. Israel, Adonai, Elohim, Adonai, Echa. Another question. Do you grasp? 
grasp the three in one Echad is the usage Yet it means more than the singular one The Shema, it states the plural When God could have used the word Yachid Echad is the usage word that God used for Adam and Eve, Shema Yisrael, Adonai, Elohim, Adonai, It's worth some translation there, which I should have done before. Um, and uh, God led me to say, like, one of the few things that I remember in the middle there in Hebrew, I'll tell you what that was too. But Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad is Deuteronomy 6.4. It's Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And a lot of questions that, that I even I had as a, a Jewish, secular Jewish person, trying to investigate this thing called the way um, is... Uh, I just, it, it, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought there, but it was, uh, it was just an, uh, one of the few things that I remember from Hebrew schools, that Shema Yisrael, but it was the, the idea of this triune God, a Godhead, all the things, and I know some brothers and sisters disagree on those things, and that's fine, but I, but uh, it's, uh, there, there are arguments for it that make it a little clear, and that was the goal there. In the middle there, I sang one of the few things I remember, which is, Hine matov umanaim shevet achim gam yachad. It's one of the Psalms. I can't remember which one, but it's the part that says, how good and pleasant it is when brothers, and I would add sisters, live together in unity. And that's one of the things that I pray as we, we have 30 plus thousand denominations of Christianity. Uh, and uh, that is far too many, but it is a reflection of the failure of the flesh. And so my prayer is that we will get closer spiritually as spiritual brothers and sisters and see the value in our brothers and sisters for their proclamation in pr proclaiming that Jesus is Lord. And we recognize that and embrace them for that because we know heaven celebrates when uh, somebody does that. So That's so true. And look, dude, there's, you have to face the fact that there are so, so many more things on which everyone is unified rather than divided. And mm -hmm. it's only these at the minute really insignificant things in some cases that divide. And, and you, we've got to realize the king of lies does his job very, very well. 
Oh, yeah. But uh, look, if you're familiar with, uh, if you uh, thought you were familiar with some of those words in that song from Rob, uh, yes, there are, and there have been some beautiful uh, Christian uh, artists who have performed songs. One that I think of uh, fairly quickly is Amy Grant. Uh, did the song uh, and uh, a few Aussie artists have uh, done some songs with those words in them too getting back to the original uh, Hebrew and, and the language of uh, Israel and uh, look, Rob it's just so wonderful to hear that beautiful song I've got to get some of your music now thank you <laughs> well everyone likes an opportunity to to go <laughs> and and that song gives you a lot of opportunity. Echad, echad is that beautiful word. It's it's a it's a plural one. It's a it's the the word that with the line in the song says it's the the word that God used for Adam and Eve. The two shall become one when when Adam and Eve are to come to become one flesh. It's a echad flesh, and so it's it's not hard to grasp, even if you might disagree with it. But at least you can go, okay, I get where you're coming from, yep. and uh, we leave it at that. So this next song, and I guess it's my last. Uh, I think that I'm within the, yep. the parameters. Um, yep. This is the, the one that uh, I'm probably most known for. It's got the most attention way back when, when I first put out the start of a new life. But it's, I want to play it, of course, not because it's, it's a song that people like to hear, but it's because it's, it's perfect for the season. Uh, it's, it's called New Life. It is basically my testimony, and it's uh, a reminder for us all in this season that as the new year comes, you know, it's, it's, it's Jewish tradition, really, just not a different time. Jewish tradition, Rosh Hashanah. It's no um, uh, coincidence that God had ordered the Jewish people to celebrate this new year, Rosh Hashanah, and then the next week to have a day of atonement that to be reminded of there's always a, a, a new start and a new time. And the great thing about the way, the way the new covenant, the new testament that Jesus brought forth is that we all have an opportunity, everyone. It's not just the chosen people. It's not just the Jewish people. It is Rosh Hashanah for everybody. It is a happy new year, happy new start for all who believe. And that's it. It's not by works, lest we should boast. It's, it's not by anything that we've done. It's simply by just proclaiming Jesus as Lord. It's by believing that he is the word manifest in the flesh. And he came, dwelt among us. And he, he lived, but he died. He was crucified to take the penalty for our sin. But most importantly, most especially, he gave us new life through the victory that we find in the resurrection. And this is my celebration of that victory. The heavens praise your wonders, Lord. So who am I not to join? With all I am, I sing your praise. By your grace I have been saved I've been made a new creation By my God Oh yeah, yeah You take me Lord as I am There are no burdens in my path once a broken, wretched man I made righteous by your hand I've been made a new creation By my God It's the start of a new life It's the start of It's the start of a new life, a new life for me. Mm, yeah, yeah. Give me, Lord, the eyes to see more 
of you and less of me Give me ears that I may hear Help me know that you are near It's the start of a new life. It's the start of a new life. It's the start of a new life. New life for me. It's the start of a new life. It's the start. start of a new life, a new life for me. I was lost, now I'm found. I was lost, but now I'm found. My world turned upside It's the start of a new life. It's the start of a new life. It's the start of a new life. A new life for me. Amen. Happy New Year, everyone. And uh, Thank yeah. you so much, Rob. Beautiful uh, music, beautiful voice. I love your voice. Thank you. And uh, look, I wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, your ministry at Lifehouse. Uh, if you want to catch Rob playing live in his uh, worship team, uh, Lifehouse Church is on Roscoe Boulevard in uh, a little bit west of uh, Van Nuys Airport in uh in the western valley yeah. uh, above los angeles and uh look uh, he's there just about every sunday doing his thing and doing it very very well and uh, look uh, i'm sure that they love you there and marie and uh, aj uh, your family tell us a little bit about some of your work there oh uh, with well at lifehouse uh, that's where i came to faith it's the only church i've ever known uh personally wow. and uh, i guess i was invited in 2005 uh, I played with a neighbor who uh, he was in my homeowners association and he and we we got to talking and we had an interest in music and he addressed to me one time after we recorded some stuff he says I play bass in this church band you want to play I go I'm Jewish no one I'm not interested uh, I mean it sounds interesting to play again but I like what we're doing here and uh, I don't want to wake up at eight o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock in the morning on a Sunday that's crazy and granted this is before we had a kid too before AJ, pre-AJ. So I was not a morning person. AJ made yeah. me a morning person. So now it's no big deal. But, but it, uh, yeah, it was a horrible idea. Uh, but then God kept tugging on the heartstrings through my friend. I ended up uh, playing. The pastor said he, he can play. My friend lied a little bit, said he was seeking. He said I was seeking. I wasn't seeking. I was fine. So I'm yeah. one of those weird cases where I don't, uh, you know, and I, I love my witness in the sense that and I, it's not to take away from the witness of those who have, you know, drug addicts and, and uh, uh, prostitutes and, and tax collectors. You know, all the, you know everything that, you know, yeah. the, I don't come from a place of that. All the lawyers is pretty close. <laughs> but, but I wasn't in the, down in the dumps. God reached me just by taking scales off my eyes. And it took 11 months. 11 months, uh, the pastor said I couldn't sing. And so I didn't sing, but I could play guitar. And 11 months later, there I was, baptized on tax day, April 15, 2006. Uh, Maundy Thursday is what it was. And I got to sing for the first time, really obviously meaning it for the first time. Holy is the Lord, Chris Tomlin, which was just a gorgeous song too. And so I'll, I'll, that, that I'll cherish that song forever and ever. 
And uh, so that's it. And, and needless to say, that we, we have some new life happening to, at Lifehouse Church. A new pastor, my pastor, the only pastor I've ever known is retiring, Dana Hansen. Hello, Dana, if you're watching. And the new pastor coming in is Wes, Pastor Wes Dunn, great pastor, but he has different concepts about worship. So for me, I've been in a comfort zone. And God's message to me for this new year is get out of that comfort zone. And so I'm following. So we'll see where he takes me. Yes, I look, I love being pulled out of my comfort zone. And uh, I'm probably at the age now where I can say that uh, many, many years going, no, leave me alone. I'm happy here. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, God has that way of pulling you out of your comfort zone and just showing you new things and, and giving you new experiences. And uh, look, I love uh, what he's doing for you at uh, Lifehouse. And uh, if you may, if I may, um continue my tradition red and uh, pray for you and your family and your ministry there at lifehouse uh, that we may bless you uh, during this new year's eve uh, let's all pray together for rob uh, father god we just pray for rob and his family marie and aj and uh, for their work and life at uh, lifehouse church in northbridge and we just uh, praise you that you have brought the scales from the eyes of him who can now see mm. and he can see the joy that you give he can see the wholeness that you give he can see the life that you give and he is reveling in it and we just praise you for him praise you for rob praise you for marie and aj and for the work at uh, their work at lifehouse church and the new pastor we just pray for them settling in there we pray for them uh, working together in unity as your church should. And we just ask Amen. you to richly bless Rob and his family and his work at Lifehouse Church uh, now and into the future. And we just thank you for blessing him with such incredible talent to share your word with us through song and music. And we pray all of these things through the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Hank. Thank you, Red. Uh, thank you, everyone that's here. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity and the gift of music. Amen. You are most welcome. Happy New thank Year. you.